God bless you. Jesus. I'm in the middle of it, y'all. Uh -huh. We're right smack in the middle of it. Yes, yes. The devil say, uh-huh, you done got this great big cathedral now. How you gonna be able to pay the rent? You know you only got a faith of few. You know what's going on here, and you know what's going on there. But I told the devil I'm in the middle of it, and God is on my side, and he's not gonna leave me. No will he forsake me. And I shall not be shaken, nor shall I be moved. But I shall stand with my feet sharp with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Yeah. Oh, yes. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Knowing that even though we're in the middle of it, God always makes a way of escape. He always brings you out. I think about Shabbat and how they built up that bean patch. How they labored, how they taught, how they worked for years to come. Getting it prepared to cultivate in the land. Motivate in the land. Nourishing the land. And then here comes some devil that want to come and take the land away from him. See, that's just where we are right now. It seems like the enemy wants to come and take what belongs to us. But God said, oh no! You're in the middle of it. Yes, yes. Hallelujah. I'm preaching to myself today. Hallelujah. Think about Jesus. When he was in the Garden of Eden, it says in the word that he prayed until sweat uh, 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 to his sweat began to drop like sweats, uh, like blood. Yes. Big drops of blood, sweat coming off of him. Mm -hmm. He was right in the middle of it. He was in the point that he was getting ready to give up because he knew he was getting ready to go to that hill called Golgotha. And he knew what was getting ready to lie ahead of him. He knew that they was getting ready to come and crucify him. He knew that they was getting ready to pierce him in his side. He knew that they was going to put a crown upon his head. He knew that they was going to put nails in his side. He knew this was getting ready to take place. He knew that they was going to spit on him. He knew that they was going to cast slots on him. So he began to get weary right in the middle. Right in the middle of God. But in the least, when he thought that he was about to give up, God dispatched an angel and it says that the angel came and ministered to him. It said the angel came and strengthened him. He prepared him to complete the work from the middle to the end. He gave him a little bit more strength. He gave him a little bit more determination. He gave him just a little bit more joy. He let him know, son, I'm for you. I'm rooting. I'm in your corner. Go ahead, boy. You're going to make it. It's going to be all right. Just like you are. He said, go ahead, girl. Don't give up. Don't throw in the towel. Don't exit. I got you, boo. I'm walking beside you. I'm leading you. I'm guiding you. You're going to make it. You're going to be all right. Just look to me. Stay focused. Stay focused. Stay focused. No, don't you look to the left. No, don't you look to the right. You stay focused. Stay focused. Stay focused. Stay focused. Stay focused. Stay focused. And then if you feel like that you ain't going to make it, lean down, Rashad. Turn the face to the audience. You feel like you ain't going to make it. I allow an angel to overshadow you. I allow an angel to shield every God that tries to infiltrate your mouth. When the enemy tries to deter your faith. When he tries to make you feel like you want to commit suicide. When you try to give up, he said, I'm shielding you. Right in the middle of it. Said, 
defended his ground. Yeah. You see, he kept his eyes on the real enemy, which was the Philistines. He realized that someone had to render Satan's power to become ineffective. Somebody had to shut him, slam down. So you know how when you're going through in the middle of your situation, and you got those soup sales negative. Well, girl, don't you do this. Don't you do that. I told you they wasn't going to mount to anything. I told you they wasn't going to be no good anyhow. Go ahead and leave her. Go ahead and leave him. Honey, you don't need them. Go ahead. Pack your bags and move. You can do bad all by yourself. Honey, uh -uh, if I was you, I wouldn't stay there. Uh -uh, I wouldn't be in that mess. I wouldn't have that mess. See, that's the enemy talking to you, telling you, just give up. Just throw in the towel. Uh-uh, it ain't going to work. Uh-uh, uh-uh. You've been married to this thing for a long, long time now. And ain't nothing happened yet. It's been 15 years and still nothing ain't, ain't happened yet. Go ahead. Throw in the towel. Give up. Let it go. My God. You're right in the middle of it. And then the enemy just, nah, 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 You ain't nothing. You ain't going to amount to nothing. They don't love you. They don't like you. They hate you. They just want your money. They don't want to be a part of you. They just using you to get what they want from you. See, that's what the enemy tells you. He tells you that you are nothing. He tells you that you will never amount to anything. He tells you, yeah, your daddy was a drunk. I told you you was going to be a drunk too. Yeah, your mama used to smoke weed. I told you you was going to be a pothead too. Oh yeah, you been incarcerated seven times. Uh -huh. Look at you now. You got a felony record now. So what about the felony record? God can take that record and turn it into a blessing for me. How did you know he can send me to the prison to preach to the, to the preach to the ones that are lost and compel them to come to Jesus Christ? How dare you try to infiltrate mess in my mind? Do you know who I am? Do you know that I'm a kingdom's kid? See, this is what you gotta do when the devil begin to talk to you. When he begins to say all negativity and put it in your heart and place it in your spirit. You say, uh uh, hold up, wait a minute, I know who I am. I know who I serve. Uh uh, you're not gonna put that in my mind. I'm not gonna let you infiltrate that in my spirit. I counsel your assignment through sabotage your spirit. You connive your spirit. I recognize you. You're walking with a contrite spirit. Uh, you trying to decipher, you trying to kill the anointing that's on the inside of me. If you fight me that bad, I know that something is great on the inside of me. I know that I'm a kingdom's kid. Why you coming at me like that with all birth? Why you keep messing with me like that? Yeah, you on your job, but guess what? I'm on my job too. I got my feet shot with the preparation of the gospel of peace. I got my sword in my hand, which is the word of God. I'm praying in season and out of season. I'm praying early in the morning because the Bible says early when I seek it. I'm looking at God. I'm trusting in you. My hope lies in you, God. You are the keeper. You are the lover of my soul. I'm yielding my vessels to you. I'm yielding my members to you. My mind don't line up with the word of God. My heart's going to line up with the word of God. My hand is going to praise you. I will bless you at all times. Even in the middle of it. My praise, huh? your praise, huh? shall continue to be in my mouth. Huh? I will praise you in a dance, God. Huh? Even in the midst of this thing, huh? I will not burn up. Huh? I will not complain. Huh? I will not back down. Huh? I will not give up. in your mind 
to throw your focus off. Yes, he, will. he doesn't want you to see the finish line. He wants you to stay close to the front line. Yeah. If you think about swimming, for those of you that know anything about swimming, and you want to go to a swim class, first thing they do is they teach you how to breathe first outside of water. Make sure that you ain't going to get in there and realize you don't know how to breathe when you get in the water. 